Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show how to dynamically write to different log files using log4j2. So building off my previous log4j2 video, we can see the pomxml file here which doesn't need any changes. But the log4j2 xml will need some updates. Do note the new writing section I just copied here. This is an appender which helps you find a dynamic logging. Now in these other console appenders, I'm going to do some cleanup. I'll get rid of this filters tag and the console error and the console debug appenders. In the logger section, we will also update this. We'll create a logger for each of the appenders we created above. Now we're going to create a Java file that will help us with these loggers. I'm going to create public static final logger objects that will represent a logger we defined in the log for j2 xml file. The first you can see is the routing logger. And I'll quickly copy and paste this logger a couple more times to save time. And the first copy you'll see I'll be referencing the console logger and the last one will reference the main logger. I'll add some comments to these loggers to help us get more context for this. Now notice the first logger routing logger in the Java file. See how the routing logger in the Java file corresponds to the logger in the log4j2 XML file? And within that logger it's referencing the appender ref routing. And if we scroll up above we can see that creating that we created a routing appender with the name routing. And you can see the contents of this appender here. Now back in the Java code, do notice the console logger logger and see how that corresponds to a logger in the XML file that is called console logger. And notice within that the logger it, app it references the appender ref console out, which you can see the definition above, which it just logs contents from the terminal output. And lastly in the Java file, you'll see this main logger logger. Once again, this corresponds to a logger whose name is main logger in the XML file. And within it, we do have two appender refs, including the main rolling log and the console out log. So this log file will capture anything logged into the main console window and will log anything to the main rolling, main rolling log appender, which you can see here above. Now we're going to update the code to use these new loggers. And here I am in the monitor class. I'm going to come out the existing logger and rename the logger object references in the file to use the console logger. The idea here is that these logs will now show up on the console log. Now let's go to the start service Java file. We'll once again comment out the existing class logger, and this time we're going to use the routing logger in place of the logger references in the class execution code. This is the dynamic log where we can write to different log files. Also, for the dynamic logging to to lock the different files to work, I'm going to add a variable to this class to uniquely define this instance. We'll use this instance string variable to help us log to different log files dynamically. Now, right before the routing logger, we're going to use that variable in a thread context put code invocation. We'll put the instance variable as the second parameter, and for the first parameter, we'll put the string text dynamic log. We'll quickly update the routing logger call to put the instance variable as part of the log. We'll also add this to the thread context.put in front of the other two, other two routing logger lines of code. I'll show you in a moment where this dynamic log ties into the dynamic logging. And you can check the log4j2 XML file for the routing appender for a clue for now. Now let's go ahead and update the main method. The start service class now takes one parameter for the constructor, which will represent this instance. So we'll just go ahead and call it database A for this one here. Now we'll also create a second instance of start servers and we'll pass database B as the input parameter. And then we'll have it run on its own thread.
Let's go ahead and also comment out the current logger and replace the logger call with the main logger. Now let's go ahead and run this app. Let's take a look at the console output window and notice the output of logs. Okay, now that the app is finished, let's see these three output logs. The first one stating application started is here in the main method and it's using the main logger. If we also open up the app.log file in the logs folder, we can see the same log there. If we go back into the log for J2XML, we can see that the main logger, logger, has two app vendors, which is the main rolling log and the console out log. The main rolling logs log I should say, the main rolling log logs to the app.log file mentioned above, whereas the console out logs to the output window. Now if we go to the start service class with the dynamic logging, we see that the thread context that put call for dynamic log key uses the value in the instance variable. Once again, this instance variable is input parameter when instantiating the start service class. Now in the logs folder, we'll see a database a underscore log dot log file, which has the connecting and disconnecting log messages that we see in the start service class. Also, we'll see a database underscore b underscore log dot log file with its own log messages indicating connecting and disconnecting. So let's look at the dynamic log key and go back to the log for j to XML. Let's look at the routing app vendor and notice the routes pattern has the, the CTX dynamic underscore log text. The data below shows it using that to create dynamic log files for the app and it uses the instance value passed in to be part of the log file name. So once again, it is using the routing logger variable from log helper.java and the logger it gets is the routing logger there. In the log4j2xml, we can see the, the logger tag for routing logger, and we can see that it's appenderref is routing. And then we can find the appender routing above with the dynamic log, and we can see how it all ties together. That's it for the simple demo. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.